Welcome to the Trading with Venus podcast, where we help you establish strong trading habits, generate consistent profits, and create the lifestyle you desire for yourself and your family. Now your host, Raman Gill. Welcome to another episode of the Trading with Venus podcast. This is your host, Raman. Today, we'll talk about the different types of currencies there are. So you may have heard me talk about risk currencies, commodity currencies from time to time. So there were questions in regards to what are, what are the different types of currencies. So I thought we'd cover these in today's um, topic here. So let's take a look. So we are going to look at different types of currencies. But before we get, uh, before we dive into that, just a quick disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business. So please be careful with your money. And this here is not intended to be uh, personal investment advice. Uh, for that, please consult your investment advisor. All right, so there are many different types of currencies. So the three main different categories of currencies would be risk currencies, commodity currencies, and safe haven currencies. And um, we will go through each of them um, on their own, and we'll take a look at why are those currencies categorized in that way. So we'll start off with risk currencies. So first of all, what are risk currencies? We'll look at the definition and then we'll dive into um, which currencies are actually risk currencies. So the reason the current, some currencies are called risk currencies are because when the risk appetite is high, the, those currencies will go up in strength. So um, what do I mean by risk appetite? Risk appetite uh, means that when investors are willing to take risk. And when does that happen? That would be when the economic conditions are really good. The, for example, the country has been um, growing, the economy is growing, uh, the jobs uh, have been increasing, the people are employed, people are making money. So that creates a good, um, good sentiment, positive sentiment in the country. In that case, the investors are willing to take on risk. That means they are willing to invest in um, what are called risky assets. So those things would be, for example, the stock market. Um, so these are the times when people are willing to take on this risk and they are willing to, um, willing to invest in those assets. That means they're looking for higher returns than what the safe assets would get them. So safe assets will be your bonds, right? So bonds usually have the lowest interest rate of um, everything. And then from there, we can go into stocks, which we're basically when uh, investors are looking for growth, they will go into stock when they're not feeling so safe um, and they want to be safe, when they do not want to risk, they will go into bonds. So bonds are called safe assets and stocks are risky assets. So when the risk appetite is high, that means the investors are willing to take risks, people will, uh, then investors will go invest in the stock market. And during these times, everybody's optimist, optimistic, things are going really well. So what are the currencies that we see going up during these times? So these currencies will be called the risk currencies. And these currencies are British pound, euro. Both of these currencies are called risk currencies. Um, and we'll find when things are going really well, these currencies uh, will tend to go up. So for example, if the, um, the stock markets around the world are doing well and um, we are seeing the overall world is doing really well and world economy is going up. So we'll see overall, we'll see these currencies going up because people will be willing to invest in those, not only in the risky assets, but also in these countries that will provide those returns and US kind of falls in that category as well. So when people invest in these countries, they have to buy the currencies and in that, and in order to invest. And that's why these currencies will go up 
because people will need these currencies to invest in these countries. So these currencies are called risk currencies. So British pound, euro are risk currencies. So when you hear on Bloomberg or Reuters in your newsfeed, when you hear any talk about risk currencies, we are talking about British pound and euro generally. So those are called risk currencies because when risky assets are going up, these currencies will be going up as well. So um, investor sentiment, like I said, tends to be high during the times of a high risk appetite. So more investors want to buy into the stock market. They want better returns than what the bonds can provide them. In order to get better returns, they have to invest in stock markets. In order to invest in stock markets, they have to buy the currency, which then pushes the strength of the currency, right? So that's the relationship between risky assets and risky currencies. So when risky assets go up, stock markets go up, these current, um, currencies tend to go up as well. Um, with So I'm talking about not just the like particular stock markets, I'm just talking about overall when the world investors are feeling more optimistic about overall economic strength right so those are called risk currencies now what are commodity currencies you must have heard about this term from me and from others when we talk about commodity currencies we are talking about currencies that are related to commodities the commodities in Forex that we have to pay attention to um, are gold and oil. So those are the two main ones that we will look at. Um, and when, when I do my analysis as well, uh, we look at these uh, assets or these commodities because um, they are tied to the currencies. And um, there's a positive correlation between the commodities and the currency. So when gold goes up, Australian dollar will go up. When oil goes up, Canadian dollar will go up. So these currencies are directly related to these commodities. And New Zealand dollar falls in that category as well. So commodity currencies are basically the countries or the currencies of the countries that are um, producers of these commodities. So Canada is a big oil producer and exporter. Same uh, thing with New Zealand and uh, Australia. These are also resource countries. They have natural resources that they export. And as a result of that, so gold is the main gold, copper. Uh, these are the main ones. So that's why they're called commodity currencies. So any countries that depend on commodities, they're where their main export is commodities. Those are called commodity countries and hence commodity currencies. So um, we have to just look at the correlation. Australian dollar and, and gold are directly correlated and we have oil and Canadian dollar directly correlated. When you see oil go down, you will see that Canadian dollar drops as well. When you see that uh, gold goes up, you will see that Australian dollar goes up and vice versa. So these are called the commodity currencies. Um, and third type of currencies will be the safe haven currency, currencies. Now, what are safe haven currencies? Earlier, we talked about when everything is going well around the world, the global economy is doing really well, uh, conditions are positive, then investors want to take on more risk, they're feeling more optimistic, and hence they will want to invest in um, risky assets like stocks and things like that. But what happens when uh, during the times of economic crisis? During those times, investors will become more conservative, right? They are not sure about what's going to happen to the economy. They're not feeling uh, very optimistic about, um, about the companies, about stock markets, about the economy. As a result of that, they want to hold their positions either in cash or in safer assets because stock markets tend to tumble when there are problems. So when, let's say, there's a political risk in the country, um, the stock market in that country will tend to go down. So that's why during these times of crisis, whether that's political risk, whether that's geopolitical risk, somebody is starting a war or bombing somebody, um, or there is basically, let's say, um, a country goes through an election and we, we are not able to 
um, it, basically there are problems in terms of doing the political party or uh, forming the political majority or whatever. Um, so in those cases, or when the countries are fighting with each other, during those cases, investors will not feel safe. And as a result of that, they will pull money out of stocks and now they have to either hold it in cash or they will put it in bonds. So holding it in cash is actually bad because due to inflation, the value of that money will go down. So what they will do is they'll take and put it in, in bonds because bonds, you, they are required, like the country is backing up the bonds. So US bonds, treasuries, for example, the US will back up those um, those bonds. And as a result of that, there is at least a certain amount of interest that will be generated on that. So there, the cash is then earning um, some type of return on top of it. So as a result of that, those um, during those times of crisis, everybody's looking to keep their money safe. Those assets like bonds are called safe haven assets. And the currencies that so show us similar impact during those times are called safe haven currencies. And these currencies are uh, Japanese yen and Swiss franc. So when things are going bad, and investors are not optimistic, they have what's called a risk aversion. That means they do not want to take risk. These two currencies tend to perform really well. So when you look at stock markets and you see the stock markets are going down, you will see that Japanese yen goes up and you will see the yen crosses drop, which means the Japanese yen is going up. And same thing for Swiss franc as well. You'll see when stock markets start to sell off, you'll see um, Swiss franc actually goes up. So all Swiss franc pairs will actually drop as a result of that. So that's the correlation. So as we are trading, we have to pay attention to sort of what's going on in the overall market. So we can't just focus on just our, our um, immediate Forex charts. We have to look at what's going on in the overall picture of the market. So that's why it's important to um, maybe take a look at what the stock market is doing. Now, we're not looking to trade the stock market, but um, looking at our new news sources, Bloomberg, Reuters, and stuff like that, it gives us this information as to what is going on in the overall market. That's why it's very, very important for us to pay attention because when the risk appetite is good, when things are going really well, we know that euro and a British pound will go up. So euro dollar, pound dollar, these pairs will go up. And when we see that the commodities are doing really well, so oil prices are up and gold prices are up, then we can focus on our Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, these currencies, because these are commodity currencies. And when we know that the market, stock market started to sell off, then it's time for us to focus on um, safe haven currencies, which are our Japanese yen and Swiss franc. So those are the different categories that the uh, currencies can fall into. So this kind of layers on top of everything else that we have learned in Forex. This is not a standalone thing, um, but it's just another thing that we have to just keep in mind as we are trading. So if you see that um, something is, is starting to... Uh, starting to drop or go up, this could be the reason. So that's where we can go for more information. This week, Japanese yen, um, yesterday, day before yesterday, yen crosses dropped. And the reason for that was because the stock markets were dropping. So if you go take a look at our yen crosses here, you will notice yesterday was a big drop in the yen crosses because yen strengthened because stock markets dropped. And right now we are seeing the, like the euro was dropping yesterday, day before for the last three days and pound was dropping for the last three days. So um, we know, and the Japanese yen cross, uh, crosses were dropping. So there was that bit of a risk aversion setting in. That means people were wanting to go into safe haven currencies. And that's why Japanese yen went up here. Swiss franc um, went up. So the uh, Swiss franc pairs dropped. 
because Swiss franc went up in strength. So that's the correlation there. I would say pay attention to it um, and make sure we are looking at these things when we are trading. Hope you enjoyed this show. For show notes for this episode, please visit tradingwithvenus.com episodes page. That's it for today and I'll see you next time. If you want consistency in your trading, we invite you to join our daily market analysis calls where we provide the levels to find the best entries and targets on an intraday basis. For a one-week free trial, please visit www.tradingwithvenus.com. Thanks for joining us today. With much gratitude, your show host, Raman Gill.